Howdy. Up until this point, we've gone over quite a few things. We've set up a web server with just a single VM. But now, what if we want to scale our, our web application that we're creating? You know, say, so we, we set up a web server on a single VM, but that's not going to scale very well. What if we wanted to be like Google and scale to millions of people? Well, one way you can do that is by using a application gateway or a load balancer. And an application gateway and a load balancer are very similar. They basically both handle web traffic and then route them to specific machines. In this video, we're going to go over the application gateway. But the difference between the load balancer and application gateway is a load balancer basically accepts requests based on an IP address and a port, whereas an application gateway can do it on a IP address and a port along with um, like URLs. You can do path-based routing, which is which is really cool. So if you look in this diagram for the application gateway, you know he, here the, the screen here is our application gateway right here. So then that can get routed to a listener and then a rule, and then depending on what that rule is, it can get routed to a different set of virtual machines. So depending on what, what is set, so say let, let's say we had a, uh, have an example of, you know, we had HTTPS foobar.com slash, you know, videos. Like, let's just say we, we, we sent a request to foobar.com. Let's just say we, we you know, entered, en entered that into the browser. Let's say then that maybe gets routed to here, to this, this virtual machine scale set. But maybe we, we have also a URL that matches video. You know, because maybe, maybe we're going to, like, upload a video to a website. Think of, like, YouTube maybe. Um, but, but somebody hits our, our web application with this URL now with video on it. Well, maybe video is a little bit different than, you know, just process in a regular web request. Maybe we need to, like, you know, compress things or, or just do, do something else. Well, we can actually look and listen for a URL with video and route it somewhere else to just this machine. Um, so, so that's pretty cool. So that allows it with the application gateway, we can, we can route things um, not just on ports, but on, on, on other rules as well. All right, so, so, so a little bit more background on, on a load balancer or, or an application gateway, how they work, is, is think of when you hit Google.com. You know, there's millions of people hitting Google.com at one time, and you can't just have one server handle that load. You know, they have literally thousands and thousands of servers that can handle that load. So when you hit it, so, so when you hit this part here, when you type in google.com, you're hitting this part here. You're hitting the gateway right there. And then depending on what what URL you're exactly at inside of Google, it's going to route that to different different um, virtual machines in the background. <clears throat> and they've got they've literally just got thousands of, of machines just waiting for it. So basically they're going to and it's going to it's going to route it most likely evenly. So if you have you know, a hundred, let's say a hundred machines behind this, this gateway. So there's a hundred machines here. It's going to kind of go, it's going to, it's going to, uh, disperse those, those web requests evenly across those hundred machines. So it's going to, it's not going to send like 50 to one machine and then one to the other. It's going to disperse, you know, an even. So maybe two requests to one, two to two to another machine, two to another machine. It's going to do that evenly. And another thing is is that this also allows your your application to be very resilient and not 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 go down. So let's say like because your your load balancer could could route to different regions and different availability zones. So maybe one availability zone goes down. Well, if that goes down, it's not going to, the application gateway is not going to send requests to machines that are down. So before it actually sends a request to a machine, it, it looks and does a health check to make sure that that machine is actually online and it's not faulty. And if it is faulty, it's going to skip that machine 
and go and find a machine that is healthy. You know, so so if there's an earthquake somewhere and takes down an entire availability zone, you know, it could it'll just route traffic somewhere else. So that's how a lot of these these big companies applications stay stay up all the time and they're just never down. It's because they just route requests around the world and if something happens to one machine, there's literally thousands of other machines that just pick up the slack. All right, so let's uh, let's dive right in and create a application gateway. So let's go to our resource group that we've been using. All right, so we've still got our, our, our virtual network, our IP, and our security group. So let's go to our virtual network. So if you remember, initially we created a couple of subnets. So we created an AG subnet. That's for our application gateway subnet. And then we created a BE subnet. That's for our backend pool subnet. So our backend pool subnet is going to hold all of our machines that are waiting for requests. So, so that BE subnet is going to be on these machines here. And then our AG subnet is going to be on our actual application gateway. And when you put an application gateway into a subnet, you can only have an application gateway in that subnet. All right, so let's let's create that our application gateway. All right, so let's see again some of the familiar stuff. You know our subscription, and then resource group. We're going to do course resource group. Application gateway name. Let's just do course app gateway. Region. We're going to do U.S. East. The tier we're going to do standard V2's tier. That's the that's the newer model, so I would select that. You can also do a WAF. That's a web application firewall. Uh, we're just going to do the standard today, but the web application firewall will uh, will handle you know look for like SQL injection uh, and different things like that. So if you actually look, if, if we select it, um, we get more we get more options down here. So you can have it like um, a detection po possibility or a prevention, um, and then firewall status. But we're just going to do standard v2. And then we're going to do enable auto scaling. So this auto scaling is just auto scaling of the actual load balancer itself. Um, we're going to keep that at two. So that's going to ensure we have uh, two load balancers just listening. So if one goes down, it, it won't crash our system. Then our availability zone. We are gonna do, let's just do two zones. So our application is fine. We're just gonna keep it in US East and we're gonna do two availability zones. We're gonna do zone one and zone two. And then HTTP two, we will enable that. That's just newer HTTP protocol. It's slightly faster. All right, and then our virtual network. We're gonna use the virtual network that we used that we created already. And it's gonna to default to our AG subnet that we set up before, so we're good there. All right, next, so you can actually have an application gateway be just internal, so it doesn't actually have to be facing the public web. So you can do that, that by selecting private if you want to. But we wanna set it public, we want people to be able to enter in our domain and then our application gateway handle that traffic and then disperse that traffic to just different virtual machines that we had set up. Say public, so then we're gonna do our IP address that we already set up. So this is a static IP, so it won't change. That's good. So let's set up our, our backends. So our backend pool is, our backend pool is, is these. So this is a backend pool, this is a backend pool. So we're just gonna create one. But if, if we had a if we wanted to do, you know, do do look for this slash video, that could be one backend pool. And then if we just had just foobar.com, that could be another backend pool. Let's just name it. Default pool. 
And then it says add back in pool without targets. So we need to be able to add, add these machines to our back end pool. You know, so we haven't done that yet. Uh, we could just create manually create some virtual machines and attach it, which is fine. But what we want to do is we want to do a, a virtual machine scale set so we can have hundreds or thousands of machines. So we're going to actually do that in the next video. But what, so for now, we're just going to say add back and without targets. And then, you know, once we're done setting up our application gateway, we're going to attach a virtual machine scale set to this application gateway that will populate all of our backends. Let's click add. So we're good. So we have no targets right now. So the targets would be each individual virtual machine scale set. Now we go to configuration. So we have our front end. So this is this is our our, our URL or our IP address. That so when when a and at, at some point later on in this series or in this course, we'll map this IP to an actual domain name. But right now, when people hit this, like we need to figure out where it goes. So we already have our backend pool here. So what we need to do is add a routing rule. And so let's let's just name it course routing rule. You can kind of name that whatever you want. Then a listener will just do course course listener. And our front end IP is going to be public because you know we set it up uh, on a previous step on public and not private. Uh, the protocol here, we're just going to do HTTP. I don't want to get into having to do, you know, encryption in this video yet. Uh, but if you were going to do like, because most most of the time your application you do want HTTPS, uh, so you would select that and you would need to upload a certificate or and use Key Vault. Uh, so we haven't gone over Key Vault yet. Um, but if you wanted to, if you needed the HTTPS, you can you can do everything right here from that. But for the sake of this demonstration, we're going to keep it simple at HTTP, but setting up HTTPS is not is not is not a big deal. And the port we're going to keep at at eighty. So when a web web request comes in, so when we hit foobar.com on port eighty, this is the rule that's going to handle it. So so this rule. So you know, let's say this this here is listening on port eighty. So this is our our uh, course RR rule. You know, we're gonna say this is the course RR rule. We're gonna go and boom, we're gonna hit that. You know, so if we had like, you know, another another rule, you know, it could be hitting this and going from here. Right. Another thing with the application gateway is you can there's a listener type, so we're gonna do basic, but you can actually host multiple different w websites on one application gateway. So let's say you're a, you know, an agency shop or something and you have a bunch of customers and you host all those customers, you know, and one person had a URL of foobar.com and then another customer had, you know, foobaz.com. You could actually host both of those onto this this load balancer if you wanted to. We're not going to do that. And then you've got a uh, error page URL if you wanted to add that. All right, so we set up our routing rule in our listener. Let's go to backend targets, our rule name, and then backend pool. So we set we set up that default backend pool in one of these previous steps here. So let's select that. And now we have HTTP settings. So there's nothing here. So what we need to do is we need to add one. And this is how it will route. This is kind of just saying how, how is it going to route from our load balancer to our our um, our, our, our backend, our, our our virtual machine. So how is it going to route it from here to here, uh, and what what like what protocol? So you can you can do end to end and have HTTPS throughout from from uh, your your application gateway to your backends. We're going to keep it at, at HTTP. So we're essentially you know, before we're, our users here, this this is going to come through port eighty, right here, and then we're also right here. We're going to go to port port eighty, 
and send it through port 80 from here to here. So you send, so the user sends it to port 80 to here, and then we send it here to port 80. And you could also even have users, you know, like on most websites you have HTTPS. You can send HTTPS here, so on port 443, and then from here over, it could be port 80. All right, so we're gonna keep that. Let's just add, you know, HTTP setting. Yeah. Perfect. And then there's cookie-based affinity. Uh, probably a good idea to enable this. It kind of depends on your application. But so so when you actually, and you'll see this in just a second, but when you actually, if you say you have three virtual machines set up behind your load balancer, when you go and request it, you're going to hit the one machine. You, it, it could be random. You don't know what machine you're going to hit. So, so if there's three machines, when you go to foobar.com, it could route to any one of those three machines. So this could cause issues if, if you're the same user and you have a web application and you have sessions. So the sessions might only be on the one machine. So say you logged into machine one, say you logged into machine one, and then on the second time you hit the URL, you, you get routed to machine three over here. Well, that machine three might not have your session information. So that could cause issues. Uh, so one thing you can do is you can enable cookie-based affinity. And what that will do is that will assure that when you hit the one, when you go to foobar.com the first time, it's going to make sure you always go back to that same server each time if it can. So you can just add, you know, some numeric or some unique key there. Uh, we'll, we'll just disable it for now. But And then con connect, connection draining is good. So connection drain is good because you know, maybe you need to do some work on some of your virtual machines or something like that. Um, so what you can say is drain timeout. You can set that to, let, let's just say, 145 seconds. And then basically what connection draining is going to do is you can say, all right, I'm taking the mach this machine offline. So it the, the load balancer will stop sending requests to that machine. You know, and then after 145 seconds, it's going to try to any requests that were already sent. It's going to try to resolve all those and get those taken care of. And then after 145 seconds, the machine might go away. But it'll basically you can stop sending requests, and this is good for maintenance um, and different things like that. We'll just disable that for now. Um, but we're, we're we're good here. All right, so the other thing on the back end target is, like I said, is where you can do path-based routing. We're not going to set that up right now, but the path-based routing means, you know, we could go to foobar.com or we could go to, you know, video. And that, that's a path. So we could listen for this actual path here. So if we wanted to add path-based routing, I don't want to get too complicated. I just want to set up a basic application gateway that will just route all of our traffic to the load balancer or to the application gateway and then disperse it to multiple multiple machines but like for for the situation here all of this this is this is done based on on your on your path based routing here so you you can set that up that up here if you wanted to we're just going to click add hopefully we have everything set up and again you can click on or add tags if you want to. Let's review and create. Let's hopefully we set up everything correctly. Validation passed. And let's create that. And this might take take a few minutes to um, complete. But once this is done, what we're going to do is we're going to go to and we're going to create our virtual machine scale set, which will allow us to attach thousands of machines to this application gateway if you want. So make sure you hit the subscribe button below to not miss out on any future videos. And we'll see you in the next video.